Hey everyone, I'm Andrew Harris, and these are Sirlins. Hey guys, I wanted to make this channel because I noticed that there was a lack of electric bike and Sirlin content on the internet, and I wanted to help educate the community. In this video, I'm going to break down the modifications I've made to my Sirlin. Going to be my overview of my Suron with my ASI BAC 4000 controller and my light speed 72 volt battery. Detailing all of the mods that I've done to the bike, we're going to start by the front. So, the first modification I'm going to list will be my front 225 millimeter Hope floating front rotor. I have that running with these nice Shimano brake pads that are seated in the stock calipers. To make sure that we would have proper alignment of the caliper with the extended front rotor, I needed to do slight spacers that I bought from Ace Hardware. These are half inch spacers, and that makes the caliper sit perfectly on the right spot on the rotor. Credits to Mark Sakai for this mod, for bringing it up on his forum. I'm using Handu K34 tires that I bought off Revzilla. They're the 19 inch version, so they fit on the stock Suron rims. And I'm using three millimeter thick dirt bike tire tubes on the inside. I also, for the look, chose to do spoke covers in black to match the rest of the bike. And up front we have a mud hugger extended front fender that fits nicely under the stock front fork. For lights, I bought a 12 volt daytime running light off of Amazon. For my brights, I'm using a light bar that most people in the Suron group are very familiar with and has become a popular mod. For turn signals, I bought these 12 volt indicators that come with interior relays so you don't need to buy a turn signal relay. For my bark busters, they are $20 on Amazon and they've gotten a lot of wear and tear from me teaching people to ride the bike. It's far better to damage these than to snap off a brake lever. Moving on to the peripherals, we have nice wide side view mirrors. These can be bought for $15 on Amazon. For the phone holder, we have a Vava phone mount. Very easy to put your phone in. Auto locks and then you press a button to release. So on the left, we have all of the controls. We have our daytime running light, which is on by default, and our brights that can be turned on by switching this up. We have front turn signals, which can be switched on and off in the direction that you want to turn. On the left, you'll notice that I have a half turn electronic throttle. That controls my regen braking. This throttle came with my ASI BAC 4000 controller from ERT. For comfort, I have Pro Taper Grip Donuts. In the middle, we have a TFT color display that came, once again, from ERT with my ASI BAC 4000 controller. And it has three speed modes that allow me to switch on the fly. Power in mode three is full power. Power in mode two is two-thirds power, and power in mode one is one-third power. The top speed for each of these modes is also limited to one-third, two-thirds, and full. This adjustment can be tinkered with in the ASI Backdoor app using field weakening settings. Underneath, we have the ERT ASI BAC 4000 controller. It does get a little bit warm, so I am planning to install a heat sink. We're running the stock motor with a stock bash guard. Inside here we have the 72 volt battery from Lightspeed. Currently I'm running a stock rear spring and shock absorber, though I plan to upgrade it so that I can have more weight on the rear seat, especially when I'm shuttling around other people. On the rear we have a mud hugger extended rear fender. This can be bought on eBay. So now onto the rear. I have an active brake light. It's a 12 volt that I bought off Amazon. I have the same turn signals as in the front. 
and the custom seat extension that I welded myself in my school maker lab. This mounts directly onto the stock frame below the seat with one by one inch steel beams that then connect to a piece of sheet metal which I mounted the seat off of. The seat can definitely support the weight of a person, but currently I do not have rear foot pegs, so if I ride with a passenger, I let them use my foot pegs for stability purposes, and I just ride with my legs hugging the battery. For safety, because the bike is all black, I chose to use red reflectors in the rear and orange reflectors in the front. I have a GoPro mount on the side of the bike to give an interesting front perspective. In the rear, I'm running the stock 48 tooth sprocket with a gold X-ring chain that I bought off Amazon. This is the K34 tire from Revzilla. The front wheel is running 2.75 inches wide and the rear is running a three inch wide. This is very, very close to the threshold of the clearance of the chain. Clearance in the front was also a tight squeeze, but the 2.75 inch wide tires fit perfectly. I'm going to briefly touch on the stats of this bike, but I should have all of the information in the description below. The battery discharges 300 amps peak and 200 amps constant. Currently, through the ASI Backdoor app, I have limited the battery current to 14.4 kilowatts. The bike goes from 0 to 60 in just about 5 seconds, depending on charge. And the bike will wheelie at any speeds below 30 miles an hour when you twist the throttle all the way. I want to thank everyone for the support I've been getting in the Suron Owners Group on Facebook. People are very encouraging and it's a great community to be a part of. Thank you.